She hit just about right about here and went back about 300 feet intermittently. This week, people around the world will remember the well-known tale of the Titanic. It was 100 years ago the mighty ship hit an iceberg and sank. But here's something you might not know. Ice wasn't the only problem. Our Red Sharon has the story of the crew's other huge challenge, fire. Red. Wendy, it's true. Among all the other things that the Titanic was in April of 1912, it was also on fire. This is pretty impressive, Norm. Eight years of my life. There's not much you can tell Norm Lewis about the Titanic. The founder of the Canadian Titanic Society spent thousands of hours building this replica of the ship of dreams. Passengers? There were uh, 2,207. Crew? 800. And the top speed? Top speed would be about uh, 24 knots. A massive ship that needed a lot of coal to keep those props turning. It'd take quite a bit of coal to push this through the water, right? 650 tons a day. 650 tons a day, and that would have been stored all? All down in below the water line yeah. in the bunkers. But what most people don't know is that deep in one of those storage bins, the coal that was supposed to power the Titanic had itself ignited. The fire was uh, going right before they left Southampton. So all the way and across? All the way across. How did it happen? That year there was a minor strike and they were short of coal. Professor Robert Essenhai is an expert in combustion engineering who was asked to investigate the fire on board Titanic. He says in 1912, there was such a shortage from the coal strike that the White Star owners worried there wasn't enough coal to power the Titanic. So they started tying up other ships and transferring the coal on board to Titanic. Moving coal around can cause it to catch fire. Under certain conditions, coal can spontaneously combust. Yeah. Essenhai says that's exactly what happened. The coal deep in a storage bin started to burn. So the, the evidence was that when they moved it from the, the ship alongside into the Titanic, uh, in one or more bunkers, uh, it went in and it was burning. The fire probably was burning somewhere in the middle. That was bur yes, that's burning somewhere up, up, up here. So very hard to get at. The crew was ordered to keep quiet. Passengers headed out across the Atlantic, completely unaware that 12 men were working around the clock, trying to keep the fire under control. Norm Lewis. How significant do you think that fire was in what happened that night? Well, it, um, it was significant. If it had been it got out of hand, it could have caused a lot of damage. And I mean, if uh, steel gets heated, the temper goes out of it. In fact, in testimony given by fireman Jay Dilly, who survived the sinking, the metal in the storage bin glowed red with the heat. And the fire could well have been the reason Titanic was moving at almost top speed in the middle of the night through dangerous Iceberg Alley. Dilly testified, no sir, we didn't get the fire out. There was talk, we'd have to put the passengers off in New York and then call on the fireboats there to help us put out the fire. Other testimony claimed the fire had been put out, but Robert Essenhigh doesn't think so. He thinks they were trying to shovel out the burning coal bunker, throwing the coal into the huge boilers all the time, going faster and faster. With the Titanic, uh, it was, uh, it, where it was burning was halfway up. And that is why they were still steaming at full speed. And going so fast at night. Yeah. But the fire itself is, is starting to burn up, so there was no way they could get to it. When it hit the iceberg, the Titanic was doing around 22 knots, almost full speed for the ship. The iceberg made contact right on the front side of starboard, where the coal fire had been burning for days. She hit just about right about here and went back about 300 feet intermittently. 
The inquiry into the sinking found Titanic speed excessive given the ice conditions. Ironically, it may have been the ocean that finally put the fire out as it sent the majestic ship to the bottom. The only ones that really know for sure are the ones that were alive back then. And Wendy, there was also conjecture that the fire was the reason why American financier John Morgan, who owned the White Star Line and subsequently the Titanic, very quietly canceled his ticket the night before the maiden voyage. It was said he was seen taking his luggage down to his Rolls Royce and leaving. Is it true? I'll let you decide. Quit the story, Reg. Thanks so much. Red Sharon and the National will have special Titanic coverage on Tuesday. Here's Peter Mansbridge with a preview. In April 1912, headlines screamed the news. The unsinkable Titanic had hit an iceberg and perished in the North Atlantic. 1,500 souls were lost. Halifax was the closest major seaport. It became the hub for recovering bodies. No matter where they turned, there would be evidence of the disaster. We'll look back at a grim chapter in the city's history and the legacy it left behind. Plus, the story of the little shoes and the mystery they solved. Without those baby shoes, nobody would know. The secret behind one of Titanic's most poignant artifacts. All that and more. The voyage, the heroes, and the enduring fascination with the ship's final moments. The National from Halifax.